Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Thanks for coming to another craft night with friends. All right, last night we finished the Scaredy Cat embroidery and tonight I got some fabric out. I wanna try and sew this into a cute, uh, cute tote bag. So we'll kind of make it up as we go. We'll decide on fabrics. We'll decide on the sizes of everything. Uh, we're just gonna see how this goes tonight. I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to make this guy. So if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. Uh, all right, you guys, let's get going tonight. Okay. So thank you so much again for joining me. Let's see what we got here. So we have the uh, embroidery from last night, and then we also have um, some cute fabrics that I picked out. Uh, so I just went to my stash. Uh, these are all, I think, cut into fat quarters already, which is about 18 inches by 21 inches or so. Uh, and I, I brought up two of each color I could find just in case we needed more. And then I found this cute uh, dot fabric that's a pretty orange that does have little kitties on it. So it does have um, some cat element. So first of all, we need to kind of figure out what we're doing. And I was kind of putzing around with this earlier today, but I kind of would love to turn this embroidery into a pocket that could just kind of go on the front of just a cute little tote bag. This is maybe a little bit small. Uh, so I'm just trying to kind of visualize it. Um, I thought maybe this was too much for the front. So let's see. But I thought this kitty fabric with the dots would be really cute for the inside. So I'm thinking that this will be the inside of the tote bag. And I have enough, I have tons. Like this is a whole like bolt of fabric here. Uh, so we should be able to cut that. So maybe actually the the um, straps too. We could we could use this. Uh, we'll make the bag first, and then the straps, or the handles for the bag second. So there's oodles of ways to make a tote bag. This is just going to be one. Um, you might have seen other ways to do it, uh, but I think um, this is this is one way. It's, I think it'll be uh, fun. So all right. So I was kind of wondering. I had a little idea here, but I'm kind of wondering what to do for the front, the front and back fabrics yet. Um, I kind of grabbed these colors. They're awfully Halloween-y. Uh, but what I was thinking, <laughs> let me know, let me know if you guys like this idea. Since we are going to work on this for two days, we might have time to do this. So this is going to be a Thursday uh, and Friday project, so we'll have two hours. Um, I thought it was kind of pretty on black. Let's just open one of these up as if it's the front of the tote bag. All right, let's just say that, let's just kind of make it that shape. There, so this is, this is about tote bag size, right? So this is what like a pocket would look like on the front. Um, this is maybe too much. Let's see what this um, purple looks like. Just kind of opening it up and folding it into the shape of a tote bag. We're going to just wing it on the size and stuff too for all this. Just what we think kind of visually looks like a tote bag and then we'll make it into that. That's what's going to be fun about this. You, we don't even have to really, we don't have to start with a plan really. We can just figure it out. So I like the purple. But what I was thinking of is like, what if we did stripes? So like, what if it was like purple, like black, purple, black, and then purple, like a stripe of, um, you know, I don't know, something like that. That's kind of Halloween-y. That's like Beetlejuicy, right? <laughs> a little bit. So I don't know. I'm kind of thinking like this would be super duper fun. Um, so let me know what you think about this idea. Uh, we could actually do it with, um, I wonder what it'd look like with all four colors. Maybe a little much. Kinda, kinda like that purple and black together. And 
And then we just do the same for the front and the back. Ooh, that green and orange is pretty too. But I don't know, what do you guys think about the, the purple and the black together? I think that would be kind of nice. Let's see. And then, uh, so okay, so purple and black. And then the inside would be this orange. So we would get a little bit of the orange in. What else? Then this could also be the straps. Or we could use one of these other colors as the straps as well. So like, let's just pretend that this is a strap up here. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. We could do green for the straps. Uh, then we're kind of hitting all of the colors that are in, in the, um, in the um, embroidery here. And I mean, you can't not say that this is Halloween, right? <laughs> so it's kind of a lot, but it's kind of cute too, isn't it? Um, all right, I'm kind of digging this. All right, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like this size too. Uh, so let's just kind of get a general idea. Let's just say we're going like this. We could even do a, the other hand look could be orange if we really wanted to, but I think maybe maybe the green is plenty. Um, all right, let's let's say this is our plan. This is what our um, bag is gonna look like when we're done. <laughs> All right, so what do we need for this? Oh, here, I got an idea. What if the inside of the pocket, cause we need to make a back of the pocket. What if that was this orange? Then we get like a pop of crazy color when you go inside of the pocket. That'd be kind of fun. Or is that too much? Nah, that's kind of fun. I kind of like it. Let's do, let's do um, a little bit of this orange for, for the inside of the pocket here. Okay, so what elements do we have here? We have um, inside lining and these purple and black are gonna be the outside. So we need to make two panels, one for the front and one for the back. And those two panels are gonna be the same size as two panels for the interior. So that's gonna make up the bag. So we do have to come up with those measurements and sew our front panels together. And then another element that we're gonna need is the pocket. So I think all we'll do is decide on a size for the pocket and then cut both fabrics at the same time. Sew those together, um, turn them right side out and we'll have a pocket that can just hang out until, until we're done with the front here. And we're gonna sew the entire front, I think. We'll sew the pocket on to the panel, and then we'll sew the entire front. I'll show you just a, um, kind of the way that I'm planning on doing that. And then later, we will put the, the uh, straps on. So there's a way to do straps where you sew them at the same time as the rest of it, but I think I, think I like the idea of the straps that go on the outside, and then you secure it with that little triangle. I kind of like seeing it hovering on the outside like that. So we are gonna do the straps, or the, I keep saying straps, but the handles, we're gonna do those like completely later after after the entire um, entire rest of this is done. So, all right, so I'm gonna set that aside, but remember that we're choosing green for that. Um, uh, Noeline saying you can make just one long piece and fold it in half. Um, the way that I'm gonna do this is I do need those two separate pieces, I think. Oh, maybe I could still fold it in half. Yeah, I might be able to still fold it in half. I think you're right. Um, okay, we'll do it that way. We'll fold, we'll do the fold in half way. Um, yeah, so we will need four of these the same size and then two of these and then one of one of these ah, you know what I think just cutting it might just be easier to um, to not fold it in half just because then I can cut all the same size pieces I think we're gonna keep doing it that way um, could you try the orange and black oh orange and black would be pretty too I just really like that purple I think the purple kind of goes with the um, embroidery a little bit more. I do like this pop of color for the pocket though, so I'm gonna keep that for the pocket. Uh, let's address 
this front panel thing first. Let's get a size of what we want. That will help us determine what size we want to make our pocket as well. So let's let's um, just start there. I'm not going to do boxed corners. I'm going to have this just be a simple, simple, simple tote, except for now that we're making it, <laughs> we're making it stripey. That's the only thing that is like making it a little, little extra. So I'm actually kind of liking this size. Um, I'm going to grab a ruler here and let's just kind of see kind of generally where we're at. Okay, it's like 15 and a half inches by 14. Um, this seems kind of like a good size. So we could do, maybe we do 16, 16 by 14, because 16 divides by four really well. So if we have, if we have um, four stripes, so four divided by 16, they would have to be four inch stripes, right? So we're gonna do some measurements here. I'm gonna actually write it down. That's what pad of paper is for. So if we have it 16 inches tall, that means, and let's, let's call it 14 inches wide. That means we need to end up with 14 inches by four inch pieces, but we need to add a seam allowance around all those. So a quarter inch seam allowance, that means our cutting would be a 14 and a half piece. So 14.5 by four and a half, 4.5 inches. Okay, so we need four purples, two on the front and two in the back, and four um, black that size and we should be good to go and then we need two big pieces that are 14 by 16 but adding that seam allowance so 14 and a half by 16 and a half is the cut size all right I think we got it you guys let's prep our pieces so let's let's do this first we're gonna need um, first let's press it <laughs> and we're gonna need four pieces that are uh, 14 and a half by four and a half. So let's see what we even got here for, for a piece. Maybe we can even get, get all of them out of here. So this in theory is 21 inches wide. That's 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 and a half about. So, uh, well, 20 by divided by four because we need four pieces is five inches. So we should have enough. So we should have enough to get 14 or like, like four, four and a half cuts this way. So we should only need one piece of fabric. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And if our black is the same size, then we only need one of those as well. Perfect. This is great. So what I think I'm going to do is press both of these and uh, uh, then I'm going to um, I think we'll, we'll just cut, I'll cut my four and a half inch strips, four of them. Actually, I might fold it in half and then just cut two. That'd be easier. And then, uh, um, I'll cross cut them. So they're the 14 and a half inches. So that will be good. You think the four and a half will be 17 and a half finish? Well, we have a it should be it should be 16 and a half finish because we're deleting a quarter inch on each side. So a quarter inch and a quarter inch is a half inch. So we'll we'll be deleting an uh, um, a half inch with each one. So it should be we should end up with a piece that's 16 and a half, I believe, Tracy. Okay, so this is better than I thought. Let's press this, and uh, um, we are ready to cut already, which is freaking fabulous. Love that. And I love that we're, we're basically using up one of these pieces really well. Um, so that's, that's excellent. Look at these poor little guys. They've been folded for so long, I think. All right. Just letting the iron heat up a little bit. I think it's going to look super duper cute with, um, with our little kitty cat here. So this is like, <laughs> the most math we're going to have to do for this whole thing. Oh, hello, everyone.
on, so I'm, I'm looking at, I can't, can't quite see the comments over on TikTok, so I'm kind of peeking here and, here and then, but hello, thanks for joining. All right. So let's press this guy. Usually I stand and press. It's not gonna be perfect, I don't think, perfectly pressed. I could spray it with some steam or something maybe, but we'll be pressing it a few times during this process, but for cutting, I do want it pressed as well as I can. Let's get this side a little bit more and then we'll switch to the black. So we are working on this today and tomorrow. So um, if we get done early, we could, I don't know, get a little bit more decorative with it maybe. Here, I'm gonna fold it in half already. because I'm, I'm gonna trim it in half because then I only have to cut twice. Actually, I could even fold it again. I might fold it twice, then cut one strip out of here. That's that's the way to do it. Although that's eight layers, because this is four layers now, and if I add this to it, it'll be eight layers. Can I cut eight layers with my with my uh, um, rotary cutter? Ugh. I haven't changed blades in a while, but I don't know. It really will only be like two cuts, so maybe it's not maybe it's not the worst. Oh, there. I was gonna say my oven's heated up a little bit more. I meant the iron. The iron is a little hotter now, so this one's pressing a bit nicer. It does have some creases in there though. All right. Oh, it's gonna be fun to sew again. I did check the bobbin. <laughs> uh, I'm a little. I'm always a little worried that that bobbin is gonna run out in the middle of. Um, our project. I did check it. It's it's low, but I think we do have enough. So um, that's that's good at least. All right, let's get the cutting mat out here. This is my folding cutting mat, which is nice. We're gonna need it a little larger tonight. Okay, let's fold it in half. fold in half again. I'm gonna shoot for the four the stacked strips all at once. So we should have just enough. I'll have like a little tiny bit of scraps here but not not a whole ton. So no, normally I wouldn't try and cut this many things all at once but living on the edge I guess. So I'm gonna cut this fold off and then I'm gonna rotate the mat and we'll, we'll get the four and a half inches, which we should have plenty. One, two, three, four and a half. Yep, we should have plenty. I should have enough to get five inches really, but we, we only need the four and a half inches. So we're gonna end up with um, four inch strips when we're done. I might actually need a longer ruler. I do. Okay, let's get the biggie out. There we are, monster one. All right, I'm gonna get my cutting glove, which is hiding here and my rotary cutter. It is probably about time to switch blades in there. It's been a long time actually since we've done that. All right, so cutting off the fold, I am cutting through eight layers now. So I'm gonna stand so I can get above. Um, let's take the safety off. Hopefully I can make it through. I hate pressing hard. This should just glide through like butter and I don't know, I feel like I'm pressing a little harder than I should, but there we go, we got through all of them. Excellent. I'm gonna just rotate this whole mat so I don't have to move my pieces at all. Okay, let's get the four and a half inches. One, two, three, four and a half. So I'm lining the ruler on that edge that we just cut. Yeah, not much scrap left over. Okay, great. So that worked well. All right, we got our strips. Uh, we do need to cross cut them 
what did we say? 14 and a half inches. I think I liked how that was looking. I like those proportions. So I'm going to actually leave all this here still because it's nice and square on my ruler yet. I'm just going to trim, trim an edge. Yep, we got all the edges there. So I'm just going to align my ruler on an edge here. So on the bottom edge and then my rule line there. So let's trim that. All right, and then I'm gonna rotate this whole thing again. And actually, I'm gonna just put my ruler at the 14 and a half inch mark. That'll be nice, a nice big ruler I can do that with. So 14 and a half, aligning the 14 and a half marks there, and then um, an edge at the bottom, which I'm not doing a very good job at yet. I think that's looking, looking pretty good. So we'll have some cute little pieces left. There we go, strips done. Heck, that didn't take very long at all. I'm happy about that. Okay, let's lay this out and then we can sew it together. So we need we need a front and the back and I'm gonna do them um, exactly the same because then maybe we can line up line up the edges. So let's let's lay one out here. Um, I'm gonna actually try and lay them next to each other. We don't have that much space here. Ugh, I'm not used to working on large large kind of um, project areas here. We're, we, we're used to sewing like six and a half inch blocks, not giant pieces here. Oh, this is already looking super Halloween-y. I think it's really cute. Ugh, cute. All right, <laughs> so um, I'm gonna just sew these two together. I'm gonna just sew them together in pairs and then we'll snip them apart and then I'll sew um, two together like that and then we'll press um, both panels. I think that's a good enough strategy. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to the machine. Um, I'm kind of wondering if I should clip the ends because this is kind of a large, larger pieces than I normally sew. And if I clip the ends, maybe I won't like accidentally stretch one longer than it, than the other. So I think I am gonna get my wonder clips out here. So let's just take a little extra time. Okay, I'm gonna just sew these in pairs. So let's flip this over. I don't really have right or wrong sides, so I suppose I don't really have to flip flip it. But all right, I just kind of want to get the end and the middle so I can make sure that I'm kind of sewing them correctly. So let's let's just do that for all of them quick. This is maybe a little above the process that I need need to be doing, um, but we'll we'll see. A little extra protection. Let's get it right. Uh, the lining, Kimberly, is going to be this uh, fun kitty cat fabric. So I'm going to cut that uh, when when these panels are done, just to double check that it does end up being the um, 14 and a half by 16. Then then um, we can do it right. Normally, I would cut both front pieces and the lining pieces at the same time, but we're piecing together this front, so it's a little a little different in this case. Last one. But yeah, normally I'd cut it all at once. We're getting fancy with it though. Yeah, I'm not I'm not piecing the lining, so the lining will just be like one large piece that's the right size. Okay, to the sewing machine. Oh, let's get our leader started. I'm out of um, leaders from my uh from my clothing project. Oops, my little guards in. Um, so I gotta cut more pieces of that. So for now I'm using my crazy, um, crazy one here. All right, 
and let's go. Long strips here. Trying to keep that seam allowance nice. I'm not always the greatest at that. I'm just using my tan thread still until it runs out, which it's getting there. It's close. All right, last one. That went quick. So I'll trim these off and um, actually I'll trim the first two off and sew those together and then I'll trim the second two off and sew those together. Stop there and uh, snip the first two off. So there we are. Okay, so here's our first two pieces. Let's um, let's line those up. So I think I had purple on the top. So let's open this up. I will press this um, next. There, like so. All right, let's match these edges. I will clip them together again. I think that worked well enough. All right. There we go. Let's sew this piece and then we'll have one of our fronts done and um, then we'll be able to take this off the machine. It's still stuck on the machine now and then we will be able to um, take sew those and take that off of the machine and then we'll press all of these at once. out there. Yeah, I think it will be fine. Get matched up there. There we go. All right, so let's snip these other two off and do the same thing. Let's line, open those up and line them up. What type of machine am I using? Oh, this is my 1938 uh, Kenmore uh, sewing machine. So it is a vintage sewing machine. Um, I call it my steampunk machine. It's, it's just got this crinkle finish, which is almost like it's been hammered a little bit. Um, it's this matte black. I think it's so cool. It's got art deco uh, dials and stuff on it. They're not even dials, like these weird face plates. It's awesome, I love it. It only does a straight stitch. I'm lucky that it does do reverse. I have a, an older machine that doesn't have a reverse. 
Um, so, <laughs> and right now it's my only working machine. So, I do have a um, a seventies Kenmore two that I do quilting on, but it doesn't work for plain sewing right now. <laughs> I gotta fix, I gotta fix that one up. But yeah, this is a powerhouse um, machine for sure. So a, a 19, 1938 Kenmore. Totally works. We've been keeping it oiled and, and all that. It's fun. All right, to the sewing machine. What I find neat about this particular machine, these some of, some of these old machines, is it doesn't have a belt. So a lot of machines have a belt that goes from um, the motor to the wheel. This has a motor pulley. And what that is is just a tiny wheel that's connected to the motor. And that tiny wheel just rubs up against the larger wheel, and that's what makes it go. So there's no, there's no belt. Um, to this machine. All right, let's take this off. Okay. Oh, you have a singer. Oh, been um, been looking for a singer two hundred one. So we have a. Um, I have a singer. Oh, that's a featherweight, right? Is the featherweights the two hundred one? I forget the. I forget um, what the featherweight number is. So we have a uh, my husband's. Uh, we have my great or my husband's great grandma's singer, but it's a 66. That's the full size one, right? And then it's like a 99 is the medium size, and is the 201 the featherweight? Um, <laughs> sorry, I kind of like get up here. Yeah, so I think I think that's the featherweight, right? I know some of you guys are are featherweight. Oh, <laughs> I'm coordinating with the purple. I got pink on pink on today. Ooh, it's looking. Looking cute, you guys. This is gonna be the cutest tote bag. Oh, here, let's let's go above here. Um, okay, let's press. Heat up my iron again. I think I'm gonna press these seams open, just because then we can match them, and one won't be shifted a little higher than the other. I think we're just gonna do them open. Then I don't have to think about what direction I have to do it in. So let's press one. Get my mat out here. I think we'll kind of just start on the back here. Oh, no, Aline says 220 and 221 are featherweights. Oh, 201 is different. Oh, it's bigger. Oh, interesting. So the 201 is a bigger featherweight still. Hmm. I know I'd love, I would love to get a featherweight. <laughs> <laughs> those are the those are the pricey ones though. You got to get lucky to find one of those. You got to have like a friend whose aunt had one and doesn't know what to do with it. You know that's that's how you get a featherweight. <laughs> Otherwise they're like five hundred dollars or something. Whereas you know a different singer, a vintage singer, could be like twenty dollars. But you know even at estate sales and stuff now. Even on the non featherweight singers, I feel like they're super overpriced because they see, ooh, these singers are five hundred dollars, and they don't realize that it's a specific, a specific singer. All right, I'm gonna come back the other way now. Um, that'll just make all these seams kind of upright, and then we'll press them, press them open here. That'll be nice. All right, one. We'll get it from the front, two. Two. Excellent, it's looking great. This is gonna be 
be like a perfect little book bag tote. One to bring to the library. Speaking of, I have a library book due. I gotta, gotta go renew that. I gotta remember to go renew it online. All right, one panel done. That's looking awfully sweet. All right, let's do the other. Just out of curiosity, how do we do on the measurement? 16 and a half, all right. 14 and a half, pretty dang good, I think. Good. Um, then uh, that, that means we can just cut the lining to that size without having to make any adjustments since we sewed it decent enough. That's always nice. It's looking cute, looking cute. So I'd like to get the pocket made. I'd like to get the lining cut next and then uh, the pocket made. Um, and then we have all basically the parts ready except for the handle. And we'll see where we are at um, time-wise at that point. Um, so we'll either continue to, maybe we'll sew the pocket onto the bag next if we have time or we'll um, do all the rest of it tomorrow. But I think we should be able to sew it together and, and make handles um, in one, one sitting here. Like I said, we, I, since we got it done earlier yesterday, done, got the embroidery done earlier yesterday, we have a little bit of time, extra time, <laughs> today and tomorrow, so we got to add like little stripes instead of just plain panels, which is kind of fun. All right, flip that around. Ooh, it's looking smooth and pretty. Just kind of feeling to make sure that my seam allowances are flat in the back, and they are. All right, got those two. Shimmy sham it down. Yep, we're good. All right, excellent. There are our two um, sides, our front and our back. Fun. Let's just kind of peek at what the pocket might look like. So I think like a little square pocket, maybe a little bit bigger than this. We'll see. This we can just put kind of like like right in the middle, like in the middle of this black and and purple stripe. So this will be just on the front. I think that'll be kind of cute. Just kind of like we'll we'll lose a quarter inch on either side here. Could be a little bit wider. Or a little deeper. I think I want it square though still. Maybe we'll just do six and a half inches because I have a six and a half inch square. That might be nice. All right, I think this is great. Um, all right, shoosh. Let's, uh, let's do the lining pieces. Get that out of the way. Okay, these can hang out behind me. Okay, first let's press this. So we need two 14 and a half by 16 and a half pieces. So this is coming from a bolt of fabric, which is really big. So theoretically this is 36 inches wide. So it's like 18 inches folded. So this should be about 18 inches. Oh no, it's about 42 inches wide. So we got quite a bit more. Um, but I kind of think the easiest way to do this is just cut our 14 and a half inches and then cross cut to the 16 and a half, like cut the fold off and then, and do the 16 and a half. And then we'll just have, we'll have just have some extra on the top. I think that's just going to be easiest. Um, so 
Let's open it up so we have at least 14 and a half inches here. This should do the job for sure. Oh gosh, actually that's pretty close. Um, how are we up here? This is cut really awkwardly. Yeah, I'm gonna have to actually do a little bit more. Who we? I don't have room in this little table for this. All right, so I'm gonna actually press this together just because I think that'll be easier. Okay, gotta move stuff out of the way for this to work though. There. Ooh, there. Just fits. Let's scooch up. So hopefully this looks decent on the other side. I suppose we could check. Probably not always the best rule to press this closed like this, but yeah, I think we're looking fine. All right, let's remove the mat. I'm gonna get my cutting mat out here. Let's unfold that. All right, just long enough. So I think I'm actually gonna start, I'm gonna fold this up a hair and I'm gonna start by trimming this edge because this is a really jaggedy edge. Like, look, there's like an inch difference here. So let's get the top folded edge on a nice line up top there. Oh gosh, yeah, I gotta trim off like all the way to here probably. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, um, get my big ruler. Cutting glove and rotary cutter. I'm gonna save all these scraps. I'll use them for something. Some improv piecing. Ooh, there we go. All right, now let's rotate this whole thing. All right, 14 and a half inches, please. I think I'm just gonna measure right on the ruler here. Do we even have 14 and a half here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and a half, just good. I'm just gonna shimmy over here. 14 and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and a half. I had to double check. Okay, 14 and a half. Oh, all right, done with all of this. So this big bulk can go away. That'll be nice. Plop it up here. Yeah, you can go on the floor. Okay, and let's trim off our fold here. I'm going to shimmy it down a hair so it's all on the line there. Good. Yep, Lenore, this kitty fabric is is um, one of my designs. This is from the Here Kitty Kitty collection. Uh, it's that little polka dot with a few little kitty faces on, on the polka dots. Okay, and now um, I'm gonna rotate again and we'll cut 
16 and a half, and then I'll have, like I said, I'll have like some nice extra here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen and a half. All right. Oh gosh, now I'm scared. I'm just gonna lay one of these on top just to make sure that it's the same. Yep, we're fine. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we have a nice bit of extra fabric here that we can use uh, for something later. All right, but that's it for the inside. So we have the interior, uh, the lining basically, and the outsides done. So here are those. So this is gonna be cute, so when we when you look inside, we're gonna have like that really cute lining. So I think this is just gonna be just really sweet together. All right, so those pieces we can put aside. They look, they look the same size, which is what they should. <laughs> I think we're, we're good there. So, all right, let's focus now on this pocket. And I think we can get the pocket done and maybe even sewn onto the front yet. Yeah, we're a little, getting a little low on time, but I think we can do it. So let's start off by pressing um, both of these fabrics. This is gonna be the lining of the pocket. I'm gonna set this um, with the, f the stitching down so I'm not like totally pressing on the front of those stitches. I'm just gonna kind of err on the side of going on the outside but I am gonna kind of brush over the top here from the back. Eh, let's get around the edge a little bit more. All right, and let's get a little bit of this orange. We'll just assume I'm gonna go in this upper corner here. I don't think I need to press more than that. We could frame the pocket with the lining fabric. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it like super simple <laughs> so we can get it done in these couple of days. But yeah, we could put it would be cute putting a little edge around around the the pocket, but I think I think we're gonna just leave it leave it for the evening. All right, let's um, get a cutting mat ready. I'm gonna cut both of these at the same time theoretically, but let's kind of figure out the size of this. Um, theoretically, I was thinking it could be this six and a half inches which would give us a six and a half, or a six inch pocket when we're done. Although that's kind of small, isn't it? We could go a little bit bigger. Although does it really need to be bigger? It could be just like this little pocket on the front, right? Do we need a big border? I mean, this would be easy. <laughs> that means something, right? Easy. Uh, otherwise, let's see. Ugh, yeah, I just don't feel like centering something and, and all that with the bigger ruler. Uh, I think we're gonna go, I think we're just gonna go with a small little pocket like this. This is like, you know, if I, if I was using this for a craft, um, a tote bag for crafting, I would just be able to throw a little scissors in there or a couple little things. I think that's all we need. That's all I'm gonna do. There, decided. <laughs> I want, I don't want to do like super uber measuring or stuff tonight. So I'm kind of moving, moving this towards the edge of the orange fabric and I'm going to center this, these kitties, making sure I'm on that orange fabric in the background. I'm going to center these kitties in here and then we'll cut the two sides and cut. So it's going to be pretty tight, the pocket against these kitties, but I think that's okay. 
So, all right, I got about three quarters of an inch from that side and three quarters that side. Let's see, top and bottom. About an inch and an inch. I think about there looks right. All right, I'm doing it. Oop. Oh gosh, this is a horrible angle there. I'm gonna just tilt a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna go to the end. I'm gonna keep my hand here and see if I can get this other cut on this side. All right, now I'm gonna have to rotate. Oop, and I move the I move the ruler, which is fine because I have all the rest squared up nicely. Let's get that last cut. Okay, I think we did it. Shush all this stuff to the side. And okay, so there is our uh, pocket and we have our little lining lining piece too. So let's sew this right away. Um, so how I wanna do that, I think we'll have just enough time to sew this and um, prep it for the, the front. So I wanna put the right sides together. So I'm gonna flip this around like so and line all that up and what I'm gonna do line the edges up what I want to do is uh, sew all the way around but leave a little bit open at the bottom um, and then we'll flip it right side out so I'm gonna just put some clips around here just so things don't move I think this is gonna look super cute though We'll just put like one in the middle on the sides. There we go. And then just, I'm gonna put another one here as my remember to stop point. There we go. So this is the gap that I'll leave open, kind of like that. All right, let's sew all the way around now. Oh, and let's um, take this off the machine. Oh, <laughs> every time you take a strand out, you have to say, uh, zoop, that's funny. Yep, that's the word. All right, so I'm gonna back tack this as well to kind of lock my stitches in place. Oh, come on, guy, there. So back tacking is just going backwards a little bit. It's kind of like tying a knot. All right. I'm gonna go, oops, let's snip this off. I'm gonna go to the corner. Oops, I think I might went one too far. Yeah, I'm gonna back tack just one. Oh, well, I guess I'm back tacking two and going forward one. Don't have that much control with, with this machine. Ah, oh, well, this is fine. We'll go here. I'm ending with the needle down so I can make that, that pivot. So I want the needle down in the fabric on those corners. Ooh, I think that's good. Yep.
All right, so I want to go uh, maybe it's uh, about here because I'm already making this hole a little bit small. So let's go like right there. I think I think that's probably good. So back backward stitching for a couple stitches and then forward. All right, let's take that off the machine. All right, so there is our pocket so far. It's in reverse still. So I'm gonna snip these little corners off first. So that'll help reduce the bulk um, when we turn this right side out. Because all of this bulk would have had to fit in these tiny corners when we turn this inside out or right side out. And so this is gonna help get rid of some of that. Okay, let's turn it inside out. And we'll have to press it nice, and um, we'll be ready to stitch. I'll do a little top stitching on the top edge, but then the rest um, will be ready. Ooh, and I'm gonna get my uh, little hemostat thing here. Uh, here's my little little clamp. I, I love using this for um, grabbing corners and that sort of thing. I'm just using it closed to poke out, poke out the ends here. Kind of slide, slide it along the seam too. I need to be careful not to like get the backs of the stitches and like pull on the stitches. So I'm just staying on the edge, getting these corners. Let's do this side. Oh, hey, <laughs> so we're making a tote bag here. Sorry, on, on TikTok, I, it's really far away for me to read the comments, but I am, I am sort of watching. We're making a tote bag out of the embroidery that we finished last night. Um, and we're turning that embroidery into a little pocket. All right, so this little um, opening, I'm gonna just kind of pull on the ends here a little bit and that will f make it fold in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just finger press that for now. We will sew that into the pocket but for right now, I just need it to kind of stay in place. So I'm ready to press this whole thing. Let's get the, let's get the um, pressing mat out here. I'm gonna get that right away, that little edge. Okay, and then let's get all these other edges. Cute. All right, I think that's good. And um, now uh, the kind of the last part of the prep for this pocket is I want to top stitch the edge. So that'll give the edge like a nice, um, it'll hold it'll hold everything together nicely at the top. I don't have to do it for the rest because we will do that as we sew the pocket in. But I need to do it for the top because the top won't be attached with stitching. Um, so we're like doing that little bit of stitching now. I kind of want to poke that out a little bit more, but I think who cares. All right, so I'm going to do like maybe like a 16th of an inch or so in. I'm just going to eyeball it, but let's go forward um, a few stitches. Ooh, I actually might need to, it feels like I need to probably guide it with my stiletto a little bit. Try and push it through it once it gets stuck there. There we go. Let's go back a few stitches. Just to lock it in place. And all right, now I'm gonna go all the way across, but again, I think I need my stiletto in here to help push these first. There we go, get it, get it going through there. in there. Excellent. And then forward. Okay. And this is going to look real pretty. So let's, let's just take a look here. All right. So there we go. We, we did the top stitching there. So we just have that nice edge on the top of our pocket. 
And I think let's just see where we might want to place this on our pocket. Maybe I'll maybe let's pin it to the to the front right away, and then tomorrow uh, we'll come in and stitch the pocket on, and then we'll stitch the whole thing together tomorrow and the make the handles and stitch those as well. I think we can do all that tomorrow. So let's. Yeah, okay. I just need whatever we're gonna have as the front. So I'm just gonna grab one of these pieces. I think I'm gonna just put my mat down um, just because I'll be pinning and I don't wanna like scratch my table here. Then we can be like, we can be even on. So I'm kind of centering, I'm centering this on my mat so that'll kind of help us center this theoretically. Um, how big is this? It is it is six inches. So we got 14 inches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so one, two, three. This would be the six inch mark. Okay, so this is if we want it perfectly centered. It's about right there. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kinda, let's just grab a ruler. That's how we can do that. So if I go along this edge, then I'll be centered. And I kind of just like it right in the center of this black and um, purple line. So let's see how far that is. It should be, you know, four inches. So I think about right there. It looks it looks centered. Oh, it's gonna be cute. So all right, let's grab some pins and we'll pin this on and we'll call it a night. It'll be ready for us tomorrow. So I'm actually gonna pin towards the center because then I don't have to move the pins as I sew. I can just sew right along here and then we'll remove the pins later. So a few pins in the center. One more. Maybe we'll go this direction. Okay, so this is ready to go. Um, I might just, I might just throw a pin right here too. This is that opening at the bottom. That's a reminder, at least to me, that hey, that's open. So we're sewing that shut. So we'll sew from here, um, these three sides, and then we'll have ourselves a pocket. So, all right, you guys, I think that's a great start to the tote. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like. Looking all cute. <laughs> uh, and then we'll get those green handles on too, which I think will be just really pretty. So. Uh, the green handles will be kind of like like so. So we'll have like this stripey little guy with the green handles and then the orange inside. So I think we're, we're ready. All the parts are there. I think this pocket is going to look so cute with that little orange in there. Little surprise of orange. This is great. So I think we made great progress on this tonight and we got to do a little extra making those strips. Um, I think we are going to make a blog post of this when we're completely done. So I will have all the measurements and everything in there um, uh, if you guys are wanting to make this later. So um, once we're done with this tomorrow and Friday, we'll, we'll work on getting that post together um, for this project. But yeah, the stripes I think are looking super fun. Uh, all right, so tomorrow, sewing the whole thing together. All right, pack it first, then sewing the bag part together. Um, that'll go really quickly now that we have everything cut out and then cutting, pressing and sewing the handles. And those are going to be like little exterior handles that you'll see the ends on the front. I think it'll be kind of cute. Uh, so yeah, we'll finish all that tomorrow. So this is, this is a great like two hour project. I think this is fun. So great. So I hope you guys join me tomorrow at 8.30 PM central time. 
Uh, I'll be on TikTok again, and I'll also be on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, we'll get this done. This is a great way to finish the Scaredy Cat uh, Embroider of the Month pattern. I love when we can turn the embroideries into something when we're done. That's that's the best. So, all right. New project bag slash trick or treat bag coming up. All right. Have a great evening, you guys. Good night. Good night, everyone.